Here we go. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. All right, today's giveaway, uh, another great giveaway, MAPS Anabolic. This is the foundational MAPS program, the MAPS program that started it all. I heard the founder or the creator of this program was a brilliant genius. Anyway, here's how you can win free access to MAPS Anabolic. Leave a comment in the first 24 hours that we drop this episode. Talk about the intro. Talk about the debate we had in the beginning of the intro. I don't care. Make it a good comment. If we pick your comment, we'll notify you and you'll get free access to one of the best workout programs on planet Earth. Um, also, by the way, subscribe to this channel. Turn on notifications. One more thing. MAPS Performance and MAPS Suspension are both 50% off all month long. Go check them out or just go sign up at mapsfitnessproducts.com. Just use the code SEPTEMBER50 without a space in between those, right? So SEPTEMBER50 for that discount. All right, here comes the show. So we actually have people who watch the show on YouTube who think what's going to happen first is we're going to have like widespread robots on the moon before people own robots. Whoa, in their whoa, homes. whoa, widespread robots on the moon. No, that we would be going back and forth to the moon like people. Oh, okay. So well, that's, that's what worse. I said. And I, and I also said that it was before like average people could have robots in their house doing these chores that you talked so about. So you're saying, okay, so let's be clear. You think that this is going to happen first, that people people will be going back and forth to the moon and earth, like boom, 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 Yeah. before- no, I didn't say boom, uh -oh. boom, boom. Like, it's like, like jet say, That's what I'm saying. Let's be specific. It's not like they're not going to teleport, boom, 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 boom. Like, well, yeah, we've already had be, a, well, There'll well, be trips. Okay, wait. Let, 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 let's clarify this. Yeah, are clarify. you talking about like billionaires going so to that's, that's, the okay, moon that's and back or like regular it, people? I think that, so it's regular people- Okay, will be able to make a trip to the moon before they have a robot maid doing no. all their house no chores. Way, no. no way, no way. You know how expensive and ridiculous it is to get to the moon? Do you know how expensive and ridiculous it would be to have a robot that could do your dishes? Way cheaper. <laughs> what? Way cheaper. Bro. What planet do you live on? Earth. Bro, you're going to be on- The Tesla boss coming okay, out Okay, see, that's year. where I just- I just, I just This is where we disagree. <laughs> do you have any idea the physics and, and fuel and risks involved with landing a person on the moon? Bro, we've already done it. We have what we haven't done is had a robot come in and do your dishes. Do yeah. What are you talking about? <laughs> we, we haven't been back to the We're moon in along. forever. Hey, you lost the debate. Go to YouTube. Actually, here's a deal. Lost. Here's the deal. YouTube is spoken. <laughs> this is the beauty of it. YouTube well, is spoken. No. <laughs> Thank you. No, you're all Thank wrong. You. There was like like four loud comments in, no, in the direction. I, there was I like, read through it. There was like was two like, for Sal, and then there's like eight for me. Yeah. Okay. Here's <laughs> Here's the That's beauty. That's enough for the win. Hey, I don't. Hey, eight to two. That's hey, right. Yeah. Here's the beauty that this is all recorded. Yeah, and, and, okay, and it's gonna we'll be, and it, it and mind bubble will be around in ten years. So. We'll see how well it ages because here's what's gonna happen Dude. when it when you when it happens. Have you seen Boston Dynamics? When Dude, I keep when posting those. when you're proven I'm wrong. Just saying. Literally, here's, we're do here's, an entire here's episode where I will concede to you. There, there's a ch there's a very good chance it's a, around the same time because I think both of them are further out than what we think. That was the uh, big yeah. argument. That was how this came up because you were acting like it was gonna happen soon. I'm like. I don't think robots are going to be... I think we're going to have... Now, what are you thinking? Are you imagining a humanoid robot in the house? Like, Mrs. Johnson, thank you. I'll pick up the kids. Like, is that what you think is going to happen? Well, no. A, what we talked about was a robot able to, to handle your house chores and stuff. Mm. Like, that's what you talked about. So yeah. a, a robot that goes and cleans your house or does your dishes or, or just one of those things. Just a robot assistant. Yeah, like a robot yeah. assistant in your house. Oh, yeah, that's happening. Mm, yeah. That'll happen. Oh, I don't think it's not going to happen. That'll happen. Just like you. I don't think it's not going to happen that people will make trips up to the moon the same way they make trips to Hawaii. Like, that's going to happen. Okay, so here's a scenario. Mm. Okay, because the people don't realize the risks, the physics, and the cost associated with flying... Unless they come out with some, I love how you try and make this argument like it's like you have facts to to support what you're about to say right <laughs> we now. We do. You don't. You, okay, well, hold on. Neither a one of us. At least I'll admit that. Hold I, on I a can't. I, I'm not gonna. I have nothing that I can say. I for sure can back this okay. up. That my, I'm gonna be right. Here's what I, happen. my case is that I just don't see it happening okay. for one accident. Flying to the moon destroys that whole market. What are the accidents going to be at home? My oh, my robot broke you're, a couple dishes. Well, it's or he stabbed my you. wife. Yeah, and you sleep with it. <laughs> <laughs> That's a robot uprising. I gotta play devil's advocate to both of you guys here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So any household chore, yeah. a robot assistant that does any household chore, is you're saying that'll happen later or after? Oh, it, wait. Okay. Now you could because you could say those little you know Roombas. Little, yeah, Roombas are that. No, no. I guess a little more than that. So it's yeah. is Which, like, by the well, way, we already saw it like in Rocky, Rocky right? Rocky uh, four. Oh, was it? right. Remember? Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then uh, Polly changes the voice. Yeah. Hey, oh, it's just got to be able to do my dishes. Because that in itself, would, I so would So a spend... dish doing robot. Yeah. Hmm. Like could do the dishes. Like a washing machine? A dishwasher? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of have one of no, those. No, no, no. This robot has to be able to take it from your dinner plate or dinner table yeah. and get it over to the sink, wash it, and put it in the dishwasher. Oh, or maybe it has it built in. I don't know what it looks like. So Bye, Adam. Have a good I don't know what it looks like work. because I think we're going to be going to the moon first. That's oh. what I think. So I'll take it a step further. I think it's going to do your dishes and give you a hand job at the same time Stupid before we go to the moon. Get out of here, That's God. what I think. Well, that takes way more engineering. You lost. Dude. I don't you lost. know if you I spoke. agree with My that. right you hand washes spoke. dishes. My left hand <laughs> handles yeah. you, sir. And the, yes. the truth is maybe it'll be both around the same time. I mean, it's going to be, they're both, I, I think they're a ways away though. Hey, the newspaper Penetration article. Penetration today. Yeah, no. The, he the headline, in today, yeah, today's news, we land on the moon and, and robot does your dishes. Holy <laughs> shit. The future <laughs> is here. Mind uh, pump again. All right. So here's, Here's something I'm going to tell you guys. Something that is uh, hilarious because and give this us some is, real science. Dude. I know. I'm going to. I'm going to no do more of your bullshit. Let's do some. <laughs> <laughs> let's do some. Re I, I can't wait. But it's going to be the best episode ever when oh that shit happens. God. Hey, uh, hey, guess what happened yesterday, Adam? Yeah. Robots doing people's check dishes. back in ten years. Yeah. So, uh, so, so this is interesting because this highlights the massive mistake that scientists and government officials and all the people who are trying to figure out. The obesity epidemic, this highlights the big mistake that they make, right? So there was a study that came out, and I'm going to pull it up for you. The study was done uh, from the Massachusetts General Hospital. Here's a title of this particular study, and this was in Science Daily. By the way, Science Daily's got great uh, science articles and stuff that are always like up to date, right? Reducing sugar in packaged foods can prevent disease in millions. So here's the summary. Cutting 20% of sugar from packaged foods and 40% from beverages could prevent 2.4 million cardiovascular disease events and uh, 700 okay and 750,000 diabetes cases in the U.S. over the lifetime of the adult population. So here's what they did: they took all the numbers, they crunched it, and they said, if we cut 20% of sugar from this and 40% of sugar from this, wow, look at all these amazing results that'll happen. So, do you guys see any problems? With a study, <laughs> why are you shaking your head like that? Because <laughs> when you bring studies like this, dude, this is why this is why I sit here, dude. Because somebody has to fucking say some shit about this. Here's the deal: What happens when a uh, a gambling addict quits gambling? Yeah. What happens? Oh yeah, he does something else. That's right. Yeah. It's like, and we have plenty of stats to show that. So if you just if you take that away. The people that have this problem, because here's, here's what we talked about. They completely about. negate well, human behavior. Well, we've, exactly. Yeah, we have like, talked about this X's forever. and O's, and it's just that easy. Somebody that is eating themselves into obesity, is it's not, a, it's not a food labeling thing. It's not a percentage of sugar in it right. thing. They are medicating in their own way. And the they're same pursuing way, taste and flavor and all these types of things. The that, same way somebody medicates with rolling a dice and can't give up doing that or shooting heroin or doing it. And if you take their, the thing they're addicted, you don't address the root cause they'll just they'll Replace eat something it. else that's got to totally hell of calories and this is and this is our experience because obviously we've actually worked with real people through this problem and here's some studies that'll prove exactly what you're saying uh artificial sweeteners have been around for a long time and when they came out they were like heralded as the you know a big solution for obesity oh my gosh you can have your sweets but without calories this is going to solve so many problems. This is incredible. And it solved no problems because what people did is they had their, their sugar-free soda or their sugar-free candy or whatever, and they just replaced those calories with other things. This is why in real-world studies, those foods don't work. The only time they actually work is when everything else is controlled, so they cut something out, but they That's don't right. replace it. Mm -hmm. So the studies like this are so stupid because what's going to happen is studies like this drive public policy. So- now you're a government official, and you want to appear important, right? right. And you want to get your your tax. We're cutting forty percent of all perception. sugar and packaged food yep. going forward, or we're going to tax anything above this. Yeah, here's the study, this and we're here to save people's we're lives. That's obesity. why we're doing it. This yeah. will totally work. <laughs> here's the new rules: cut all the sugar, and everybody's going to have. We're going to solve this problem, and then yeah. it doesn't work because obviously excess calories is one of the biggest problems. That's the number one thing, yep. and sugar doesn't make as nearly as bad of a difference in your diet if your calories are appropriate. And I'm not saying sugar is inert, but if your diet's high in sugar but your calories are low, it doesn't do nearly as much damage to you right. as if your calories are high. 
with a high sugar diet. So is, is inert like moot? Is that like the same? Yeah, thing? like yeah. Uh, like it, no reactive. Yeah, L- like no no effect, right? Uh, like benign. Yeah. Yeah, I've never heard of NERT before. Yeah, That's so new. it's re- it's. I hope I'm using it right now. It's Maybe a chemistry term. You're making me question. Sorry, well, I, no, no, shit. No, I right. just wanted to know. It was new to me. Like, I don't think, I don't think I've heard <laughs> of NERT Innocuous is another before. thing you could say. Yeah. Justin, yeah. with the words. Yeah, yeah. I love it. <laughs> yeah, so you know what it is? Sometimes I hear a word being used, and then I use it that same way, and then uh, later yeah, I'm like- You usually use that for like gases, right? Uh, yeah. In chemistry. Oh, inert. yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, very good. That's true. Well, look huh? at you, guy. Yeah, just what? Huh? Man, I had caffeine today. Huh? Good. What did you yeah. do? Yeah. Wait, hold on. You must have stayed at a Holiday Inn last night. <laughs> how much caffeine? I know did things. You, how much caffeine did you have? <laughs> a lot. That's oh, a, I had a lot. By the did way, you just say that was okay. There's there's been like handfuls of uh um handful of mind pump moments that will be forever burned in my brain as like just where I remember like belly laughing. <laughs> Uh, the time when we were at we were at this event <clears throat> at the Spartan race, we got invented, and we were at this um, it's the funniest private thing. dinner that Joe De- uh, DeSena had p- put together, right? And there's probably I don't know, would you say a hundred people in there? Uh, maybe more. Yeah, maybe more. I like About two hundred, maybe. Maybe yeah, hundred. Maybe a hundred to two hundred people in there, and and they're all on these these uh, round tables. And he had hired like a, 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 a speaker. It was really really cool event, and I don't even remember. <laughs> What was said, but the whole room was quiet because somebody was talking and somebody, somebody like to a table to the right of us or something, you know, uh, spoke out loud. To, gave an answer. Yeah, gave an answer to something. Oh, that's blah, blah, blah. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Justin, <laughs> Justin responds with, I know things. <laughs> and the whole room, that why it was so funny was because we don't know who this person is. They probably don't know who we are. It's yeah. like our first time in this group and stuff. And Justin just yeah. shits on the person <laughs> it publicly. Was the, it was the most nerdy comment ever. Like, the person was just... Just like commenting to to prove that like they're smart. Well, so I, I couldn't help it. I it belly like, laughed because yeah. I and I so did Sal because I know that we were all thinking the same thing. Yeah, and you blurted it out. I could, like it was like Tourette's for me. Dude. So I can't help it. Dude. The best part is that nobody, everybody else felt bad, and nobody. It was. Crickets. We were dying. Yeah. <laughs> and everyone, like a bunch of assholes. There was like two who invited, people laughing. Who invited, dude? Who invited, oh, who invited those guys? Here's another great moment. So obviously, since we started the podcast, we talk about that you know the fact that we smoke weed sometimes, whatever. And so sometimes when other podcasters would come meet us, oh, yeah. they would want to like you know, hey, you guys want to you know let's let's ha- let's hit a joint or have an edible. Not a big deal. Anyway, I'm not going to call this person out, but let's just say that they're very smart. Extremely smart and also, uh, you know, n- nerdy on that side, right? Mm-hmm. So this guy shows up, good friend of ours, and as soon as you see this, he's like, hey, you guys want to do drugs? Like, <laughs> what are you, a narc? <laughs> no. Whoa, 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 whoa. Who talks like that, dude? <laughs> do you have a mic under there? Yeah. You know, like, whoa, whoa. <laughs> no thanks. <Yeah. laughs> what, what kind of drugs are we talking yeah. about? Yeah. You guys want to do some drugs? I've <laughs> never, ever once in my uh, life said that bro, to one of my friends. I, in, look, yeah. I'm, look I, I'm not a big, you like, know, bro, that's not how you do it. You I'm know? not a big, <laughs> I'm not a big drug person, but if uh, somebody says that to you, it's a cop. Yeah. That's not yeah, a normal that's person. I've learned from every show I've watched. Anyway, dude, friends. Dude, you got me to watch uh, <clears throat> what? the untold story. Oh, good, Caitlyn Jenner. So you started with that one. You oh haven't watched my. the other two yet. No, please, because you like it. I will. Okay, but I tell you what, dude, Caitlyn Jenner's story is really good, huh? Un- be- so I'm I so knew, glad I watched it. So you know when you know before when Kate before Caitlyn obviously transitioned Bruce right Bruce Jenner. What a a phenom stud, stud. just. Phenom, like one of the most. As I'm watching this, I'm watching it with Jessica, and I have we have a lot of conversations as we're watching this. Cause it's a very interesting story. Uh, as Bruce, right, or even Caitlin, whatever, this individual is so gifted as an athlete. Like everything, because they have all these home videos, right, of Bruce. That's what made it great, right? They had all these clips from like back then. Oh, it's like they see him on his lawn, and he's like, "Oh, I'm just gonna do some backflips." Like what? Hey, I'm gonna go water ski one foot, doing crazy shit. This is back in the early '60s, like. Yeah. Yeah. This is one of those rare people that can literally decide to do something and be better than everyone else. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely insane. And then the story of how Bruce won the gold medal and broke the world record uh, against, especially against the Soviets, was so I didn't know this. For four years, Bruce was supported by his then wife. This is before he married, uh, what's her name? Uh, Kardashian. Yeah. Kim, whatever. Yeah, Kim's mom. I don't remember her name. He was married. His wife supported him, and all he did was train seven days a week, never miss a day, six to eight hours a day for four years. For four years, in order to be this good, yeah, so crazy. Buried himself in it. And then the other part is because Caitlyn is so open, and you know, talking about like you know the struggles and stuff. 
obviously is a, and is a 10 year old had had these issues right she said she suffered from gender dysphoria at a very young age yeah. and as i'm watching and, and, and caitlin's such a likable person very honest obviously a good father good person everybody on the even the ex-wife who anybody who's ever been divorced like if your ex talks nicely about you you're a good person because nine out of ten times <laughs> yeah, you hate right. each other. even the ex-wife was talking about what a good person you know they are and whatever and the kids love Caitlin or whatever. So as Jessica and I are watching this, I'm like, man, I really like this individual and you know how open they are about all this stuff. Yeah, it's I thought really it was interesting. Right. You know, he isn't he Doug? Do you know if he was a? I think he was a badass uh, downhill skier also. Probably. Yeah, I which I was waiting to see clips of that because for some weird mm. reason, this is how, my, how this is how little I knew about his story or her story was. I thought he won a, a Olympic gold medal for downhill skiing. Oh. So then I see none of that. I'm like, what? Yeah. I was, was I is so the didn't know. Was, was his yeah, event? it was a decathlon, which yeah. is like insane. The, yeah. Well, like they, how uh, many events is that in one? Ten. ten. Okay. Yeah. Ten yeah. events. Well, Hence decathlon. decathlon. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I lost my powers. I know. You were my like, up, at the beginning really, of the podcast, you were like, up here. Dude. Had to bring me back down to earth. <laughs> yeah. <it's, laughs> you're only allowed to take DECA when you're in the decathlon. <laughs> no, but he, but uh, tremendous athlete, incredible, I mean, physique, you know, Bruce was. But here's the part that was very interesting. Obviously, they're interviewing Caitlin, and Caitlin says, uh, "No, that all that credit goes to Bruce. Like Bruce did all that. Like that person that I was accomplished all that, and I'd never want to take that away." And then this was the best part. She goes, "But to say that my story ends with that, or there's not more to the story, is stupid. Like there's way more to my story." Than all of that, I, I was very inspirational to watch this, and I couldn't imagine being in that situation in that time. Mm -hmm. You're talking about the '60s, yeah, yeah, and '70s. Like, wow, incredible. they did a really good job. I was, I was really. I know I've, I've many times I've shit on Netflix as far as as when comparing to the streaming the streaming services, yeah, and they're doing a hell of a job, man. When they come out with these series like this, because this is literally. Uh, their their version of like ESPN. Yeah, it feels like ESPN. I thought totally. like they bought it from them or something because it's so similar. I wanted to do a little bit of research and see. So, so I I don't know if you guys know how this how like uh, thirty for thirties work is and what makes them so great. I don't know if you know this, Justin, because I know you watch most of the thirty thirties. Yeah, they, it, it's not like. Um, like normally when you have a show on like uh, any of these services, streaming services, it's like, uh, there's a, there's a writer or a producer, there's a team that that's, yeah. they do, they create all this stuff, but they don't, they do that like by the story. So like a, a writer, they submit it to, to ESPN 30 and they put it, so it's a different producer. It's a different writer. It's a different, and they take like the best of the best and then, and then they, yeah. then they make it on the show. So I wonder if that's what's happening here. Mm. Like, is it the same person that told the uh, Caitlyn Jenner story that also told the mouse in the palace story oh, or are yeah. they like ESPN where it's a whole different person produced it? I didn't, I don't, I didn't look at the credits. Well, so what's know. interesting about this is, and you, 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 you see this commonality when you learn about any, top level anything in performance, whether it's uh, a sport or business or art or whatever, m they're often driven by this, by some kind of dysfunction or some kind of deep For insecurity. Sure. Yeah. Because a, a, a person who's well-adjusted does not eight hours a day go yeah. and, and run on a track. Yeah, unless you're running They're, they're escaping or, yeah, punishing themselves in some weird way. They don't even realize it a lot of times. I've met a few athletes like this. this yeah. Is, this is why I don't get, I've never, I shouldn't say never, but as an adult, uh, I don't get starstruck or I'm not like, I mean. Because to they're tormented. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A lot of times, more often than not, that's the truth. Are there exceptions to the rule? Always. But the the I all the famous athletes and people that I've been around when you find out more about their story a lot of times what made them so great is they were tortured or they're just out of balance that you know socially and all these other things are are terrible but they are just gifted in this well, one area and they've poured and obsessed yeah and obsessed they poured everything they had into that and then we look at them and you know the halo effect and we idolize them and go oh my god and then, which is why I never I always you think probably don't want to be that person no no they they have a lot of other things going on in their life that cause them to be so great it's rarely somebody who's got yeah. great balance in their life you know who was more uh, who was super apparent when I saw them uh, speak and it was like an hour and a half long or two hour long uh, podcast was Elon Musk. It, it, it came, it was very obvious to me that this is a tormented mm -hmm. 
genius. You could tell he's tormented well, by his own genius. Didn't his dad say things like he was dumb or said that he wasn't going to be anything? I don't, I don't remember that. Yeah, but. his dad used to say stuff to him like that. He was right. It was him or Bezos. No, it was him. It was mm. it was Elon Musk. Is that right, Doug? Do you know that? Yeah, I heard that. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, his dad would like tell him he wasn't going to amount to anything, and like so. Yeah, of course, yeah. right. So you get someone who's being told by their parent that you're you're not going to be much in life and stuff like that. Like so, you. Well, if you're going to be if you're going to be someone that <coughs> innovates at that level and do, and does extreme things, mm -hmm. that also means you're very different from everybody else. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you're not you know quote unquote normal. And that's hard, we especially need growing up. We need those up. people, though. Huh? Yeah. We need those oh, people. Oh, we definitely need That's do. what I'm saying. Yeah. Absolutely. But it, it's hard to live like that to be such an You got a whisker poking out on the side of your beard there, buddy. Uh -huh. It's sticking out a little. Oh, Although, I will say this. Your beard looks very nice. <laughs> ja uh, Vicky did a very good job on Oh, it's so good to have yeah, it we're up. finally lined up again. It's so good to have yeah, it back. I know. Right? All of us were looking pretty... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> scraggly. <laughs> a little bit, too. My, I have like... a like, There's a... You know, it's like when the your hair is starting to grow out, like that middle place, whatever. Especially you, when it comes down here. You, my beard, when it does it, it gets really... Yeah, you got a healthy beard, not, bro. Not cool. Yeah, I'd like to see Justin grow his out, though. I feel like yeah. he's got... I mean, too, uh, I don't want to be too stereotypical mountain guy. You know, <laughs> I'm already there uh, yeah. to begin with, so... That's true. Yeah. That's true. Speaking of uh, stereotypical and that stuff, did you guys see... I think it's Bud Light. Did you guys see their new flavor? I'm going to pull it up just to make sure I get this well, right. Well, I know they're doing the it's whole Bud Light, seltzer thing. Bud Light seltzer. So you want to hear the one that they're launching that's coming out here? Flavors? Yeah, just the flavor. One flavor. Let's just guess. What one flavor is coming out that is... Uh, I'll give you a hint. You're probably... If you drink this, you're probably going to want to wear a pair of Uggs when you drink this. Oh, spice. Oh, they're going to do spice? pumpkin spice? Pumpkin spice Bud Light. Seltzer? Seltzer. Gross. Interesting. <laughs> Interesting. That sounds horrible. I know, right? You know, I, speaking of weird stuff, it sounds <laughs> horrible. Like that. on this. You know what? Uh, you know, Dana White is doing this thing now where he eats something every, I think, Friday or something and he records it and the, the chef makes them. Or oh, he really? Hears about, yeah. yeah. I've, I've seen some of these Have you even seen him do that? Okay, yeah. so he's, so I, I, I catch it when it comes up in my feed all the time, just curious like yeah. what, what, it, what it is and I like to hear what, you know, if it's good or so he was having this ice cream that supposedly all these people told me he has to try. It's this famous ice cream, hard to get supposedly, and it's uh, macaroni and cheese flavored ice cream. Hmm. That doesn't sound good at he all. He said, that's exactly what he said before. He says, this sounds disgusting, but he goes, I love macaroni and cheese. I love ice cream. I would have never think that th together I would like it. And he, it was, you shoot him, he's eating it, and he's like, this is fucking pretty good, dude. You know, this is really good. Sometimes things, uh, so that's tr that happens a lot uh, often where you think two things don't go together, and yeah. then you have them. Like in uh, when I was a kid and we visited Italy, my family, my grandmother you know, made some corn on the cob. They don't put butter on their corn in Italy. So my grandma brings out the corn on the cob, and we have like 15 different what courses. What they put on it? Salt. That's it. Like, put a little oh, salt yeah. on it, and you're good. Oh, yeah. That's not weird. Why do you think that's, that's not weird? They don't put butter. Oh, well, oh, that's I, not weird. No, no, no. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah, hold not on. That weird. I'm, uh, here's no, hold a on a second. Example. This <laughs> is what was weird. Um, Wendy's, you know, those Frosties putting uh, French, French fries. French fries. Yeah. 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 That's yeah. weird. No, no. Yeah. Here's what's weird. Yeah. I asked my grandmother for butter. Everybody yeah. looked like I had four heads. Then yeah. when I put it on my yeah. corn, everybody was grossed out. Oh, that's disgusting. Oh, because you put butter on it? Because I put butter on corn. And then they tried it, and it was, like, really good. The other thing was ranch on pizza. Ranch on yeah, pizza, yeah, if you've never had it, sounds weird. It's amazing. It's actually very delicious. Yeah, yeah. yeah I introduced that. I like that so much that I used to uh, drizzle it on my uh, spaghetti <laughs> yeah. because it's that's so oh, good. Oh, God. Dude. That's so Come on, good. bro. Oh, my yes. heart right now. Yes. I, you know you, you know that happened. That was like Why would a, you do that? That was a, a magical mistake. What kind right? of spaghetti? My mom it, made, my mom made a – and my mom used to make homemade ranch, by the way, too, which is so much better than <laughs> oh, all that it's packaged the best, yeah. crap, right? Okay. But it's way worse for you, right? So. Okay. She made uh, ranch salad, and we had spaghetti, and it mixed, and it was just, oh, my God. I would have never thought. And then forever after that, God, as a kid, I would. spaghetti. You can yeah. see a tear. I mean, right I haven't now. done that this is in a long uh, time. interesting. Look like at a tear coming down my eye right now when I hear that. <laughs> is this real spaghetti, or is it canned spaghetti? What, uh, you mean the sauce? Like, is it is it Chef Boyardee, 
or well, it's it, not Chef Boyardee, but I mean, I mean, my mom used to boil the noodles, and then I don't know what tomato sauce she was prego. using. Prego, prego, yeah. yeah, yeah. probably, yeah. Yeah. probably prego. Yeah. Rock Rock I did. I didn't have an Italian friend that was squashing <laughs> tomatoes in his garage for me. So <laughs> He's gonna make me feel bad now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that wasn't a family yeah. tradition. Yeah, well, what, really. Whatever you it was either the food stamps. Bro. It was either <laughs> oh, <laughs> whatever you oh, say. Now I feel terrible. He's like, listen, it was either that or electricity. So we exactly. Now I feel terrible. Yeah, except you had horses so now i'm not so <laughs> yeah. upset about that you guys actually wow. could buy, we always forget about that yeah i could buy oh, horses. hey so this is this is week two of uh max going to school oh so how, did he, is he still crying or is he good now so no it's it, so monday was uh katrina's first time crying herself so she called me crying she goes oh my god she goes today was the hardest. so we have him in school uh monday tuesday wednesday and then he's off Thursday, Friday. So he had his first week. Monday was hard. Tuesday was pretty good. Wednesday was great. And then he had Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday off. And so Monday oh, rolls yeah. around, and he's got to go. This is his first week back going. And now he know she's like, okay, it's time for school. And she goes, he starts crying. He doesn't want to go. And so she's like, oh, my God, what should I do? Should I? And she's like, no, I know he'll have fun. I just got to get him there. And so she says that, and God, it gets me think. I get emotional just thinking about what she had to go through to watch this. I would break down if I saw my son do this. So she goes, I get him out of the car. And uh, I put him down and I hold his hand. I'm like, let's go, to, let's go to school. And he's crying. And he goes, and, and he's, but he's walking. And he grabs. Because he knows he has to. Yeah. Oh. And he grabs his lunch pail. And she goes, and then he did this thing I've never seen him do right before we walk in. I think he doesn't want the kids to see he's crying. So he wipes his tears oh. with his shirt. <laughs> yeah. And he still goes, I'm like, oh my God, tear my heart out, dude. I don't I know. I can't. I told her, I said, I, I honestly, hon, you get, uh, you get whatever you want for this. Cause there's, I would just break. There's no way I could do that. I can't If do I it. saw my son do that, she said that. And every time, like, it's really tough. To break away and then like 10 15 minutes later he's she's like that's the only thing the only reason why i can power through she goes otherwise it takes i, I would break down every time but because i know that in 10 15 minutes when i'm yeah. gone he's he's playing or having a good time but that initial drop off and leave like you relive <laughs> all the challenging shit with your kids times a million oh I remember one time my daughter i picked her up, i think she was like in first grade or something like that and i picked her up and she was just really quiet and like, what's the matter, honey? And whatever, and we're talking, and she's like, um, today the 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 you know, so and so, so and so and so and so, like three girls. She goes, They Lots all so -so they all told me they weren't gonna be my friend. And mm. so I'm I like, remember when you told me this story. Oh yeah. And yeah, I'm like so brutal. Yeah, because well, I mean, that's what that's little girls will do that. Yeah. Like one of them doesn't like you and they'll convince they the other one. They'll all shun you immediately. So yeah. she was by herself. Ah, so she's brutal. like, Oh, oh, I was playing by myself and none of them want to be my friends. Of course, you know, two days later they were all good because they made up but man as a dad i'm like what do i do do i like terrify these kids like yeah. <laughs> i want to scare these girls yeah. Ooh, <laughs> play with them <laughs> like my daughter uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> i'm gonna hide on your bed <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> it was terrifying uh, anyway hey so a cool study came out i love studies like this because it's uh there's this belief this widespread belief that past a certain age your mental capacity goes down, your productive ability goes down, your ability to innovate goes down. So like, for example, we think of uh, successful entrepreneurs and we think, oh, like once you're past 30, like a oh, waste of time, like it's when you're young or we think of like, you know, huge innovations. None of it's true. In fact, the average entrepreneur starts their first business in their 40s. Some of the greatest inventions were started or breakthroughs happen from people in their 50s and 60s. Anyway, study comes out where they tested brain, uh, like basically production. Like, so your ability to produce certain things, your, how you think, are you better or worse at certain things? And they actually found, I'm going to pull it up here. They actually found that as you get older, certain brain functions or mental abilities improve. Mm. So, so here's what the study. I, I imagine it's got like a peak though, right? There's got to be a place where it kind of peaks and then, and then starts to decline. Well, so here's what they found. Okay. Now these are, these are healthy people. Obviously, if you're not healthy, right, of course, like any part of your body, your brain is a physical part of your body. It'll start to decline, but here's what they found. So it's the hundreds of older people found that two key brain functions actually get better from your fifties on. So they include attending to new information mm. and focusing on what's important in a given situation. Attending to new information, yeah. meaning that like you stick like a 50 year old in a college course, they should be able to retain mm. that information. Picking as what's important oh, to stick to oh, and applying it. So decision making, making self-control, 
Well, that's uh, wisdom. Yes. Yeah, I mean, that, that's really what you build yourself up to is you, you kind of filter through a you lot of information. You distill all the fluff and you go like, yeah. oh, that's the meat right like, there. Get I rid of all the fat. Like, this is, oh, this is the important stuff. Well, so you know what's, you know what's crazy about this? Because obviously as kids, uh, media, commercials, TV, you, you grow up thinking like older people don't know much. And by the way, this is a, re- <laughs> it's, a it's true. This is a relatively modern phenomenon for most of because all those depends commercials. Yeah. In, for mo- because you know why we glamorize uh, sex appeal and that kind of stuff, right? Most old uh, cultures revere older people. Like if you go to any old cult, any culture that's been around for a long time, you find that they revere older people. They respect them, their wisdom, yeah. their words, all that stuff. Okay. <laughs> So as I, as I got older and started training people in advanced age, one of the reasons why I love training them so much was their advice and their wisdom was yeah, just- Their life ex- experience. Oh, it was- uh, do, you I, think, do you think some of that has to do with like uh, young kids like idolize new information? Like if it's something mm-hmm. new that came out or they just learned something new and then they get so attached. Because how many times have you heard like- a young, a young mind talking to somebody who's much older and wiser, and they're, oh, you have no idea what you're talking about. Yes. This just came out, this and that. And then the, the old wise person goes like, listen, yeah. in the 60s, this happened. In the this. 80s, this happened. Yes. This is not the first time that we've seen something like this. It's just It's, it's all just, repeated formulas. That, so, right. So, I mean, do you think that has a lot to do with it? Totally. Because as a kid, you, you get... Because I remember being that kid, too. Like, you, you think about your parent and like, oh, they have no idea. They're still stuck in the, you know, back in the 70s. Yeah, like the term like boomers. Right. You're, oh, you're a boomer. Like, yeah. my son will say that to me sometimes. I'm like, you have no idea. <laughs> like, I'm not a boomer, which is ridiculous. But you have no idea. You know what I think about? I think about myself now at my age... And then I think just 10 years ago, just 10 years ago, how much uh, more I know about things. And now it makes me realize that I'm nowhere near where I'm going to be in another 10 years. Mm -hmm. So you start to talk to, now this isn't true for all people who are older than you, of course, but oftentimes you talk to people who are 60, 70, 80, 90. Like I sit down with my grandparents and you ask them about certain things and they've been on earth more than twice as long as you. They're, they probably know some stuff that you you don't know, and yeah, so it's sure. a good idea to take their advice. So it's very interesting to see a study actually show, like measure, like these things actually improve with age. Kind of cool, yeah, you know, yeah. to look to look forward to. Yeah. Uh, you know, like Doug. That's why Doug's uh, <laughs> yeah, Doug's opinions Doug's, are Doug's, so important. Doug's so sharp. <laughs> yeah, like you know, he's he's the babysit Moses, so he knows lots of things from yeah. back in the day. Hey, yeah. Justin, did you <laughs> see the um did you see the high school that got in trouble for like falsifying their records or something like that so they could get on ESPN? It was, yeah. It's trending right now. Bishop uh I forget the name of the school. I have it, I had it written down, but yeah, somebody sent that. I think Marlon actually sent me that article and um they a lot of the guys on the team were actually in JUCO. Uh, and they actually they like form this fake high school uh, in order to get what? on some kind of yeah. like uh, ESPN sponsored um, event where it's yeah, like it'd be on national TV. national TV yeah and who it, organized and the this- whole high school's fake. Who organized this? Like a bunch of adults? Oh, the whole high school is even fake. Yes. Oh, I didn't. Yeah, know they that. showed the location. and It was just some random building. And so, anyway, there's like a lot coming out. They're still learning information on it, but uh, everybody's like, there needs to be a documentary on this. This is ridiculous. This sounds like some kind of, you know, wacky movie. Right. And is the reason why they found out, because right, they got skunked, like 58 to zero. And they were like, yeah, how is this, zero. this team with all, supposedly all these act? They, they were making claims that they have like four athletes that yeah. are going to go pro. Bishop Sycamore. And it's a made up. It's a made up school completely. Yeah, made up. Oh shit! Made I didn't up even. High I, didn't, I didn't even realize. You know what that. this highlights to me is the whoever's televising this shit. Like they're not checking anything. Obviously. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah obviously. Also, like uh, sign me up, man. I want to, you know, play against a bunch of high school kids. That'd be fun. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> let's make up a. Hey, let's make up our own high school for, yeah, for us. Right. right? Uh, yeah. 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 You know, a bunch of forty year olds that dropped out of high school, but we're playing football again. And we're first place. Did uh, you? Yeah. Now I sent you guys That's over. Hard, the, right, guys? I think it was ESPN that did a, a a post on Jake Paul supposedly retiring from boxing already. I saw. He that. said that. I don't. I, it so was on the score. It was yeah. yeah. It was on score and ESPN. So they put it out there. I right away started to try and fact check. I mean, I imagine if ESPN and Score put it out, it's I would think it's somewhat true. legit, right? And so, but I started looking for. I, I went on his page. I started. I was googling, looking to see for statements from him. Yeah. I couldn't find it to verify that. But I tell you, I told you guys when we were talking that 
He it got was, rattled, huh? He did. And I, after the fight, when they were they were talking to each other, and Woodley want, was trying to, well, let's go again, let's go again, and he was real hesitant. And I think he was real hesitant because I think that was close for him. Now, mm-hmm. of course, the card showed that he, he won, you know, but it was a split decision, and I think he got rocked, and I think he got real close to potentially losing that or, fight. Or this media genius, which he's turning out to be, this is part of his like yeah. hyping up the next. I wouldn't. I wouldn't this may be the that. last fight that he does. He almost retired. I mean, <laughs> yes. oh my god! Think, hey, hey, it's, it's please don't retire. You're undefeated. We need to see more of you. Yeah, oh, think about god. it. This kid so far has really squeezed out every uh, bit of juice out of this lemon, and yeah. he's going to keep doing it. And it's really it's smart. a valid theory, Sal. Totally. Oh, totally, totally, totally. I mean, he's isn't he? Was it him or his brother that would that was uh, like filming themselves taunting? Mm-hmm. The other fighter, like just show, like was it them that was doing that? Where they were they were driving up and throwing yeah. shit at? The- yeah, well, uh, when he was trying to get Conor McGregor to yes. sign on, like he harassed him, and then his trainer, and then I think that was the next one he was looking. He's at on fighting. his list. That's the one of the guy. I can't think of that kid's name right now. By the way, that guy's blown up to like over a million followers himself. His coach? Oh, good. Yeah, Conor yeah. McGregor's boxing coach. I believe it's his boxing. I think coach. it's his, his uh, or uh, coach. Is it jujitsu? Yeah. Oh, okay. It's I, it's one of his coaches and Dylan something. Dylan 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 something. Maybe Andrew can help me out here. Mm. Yeah, mm. Dylan Davis. Dylan. Something What's like. the matter, Dylan? Pushing too many pencils. What's the <laughs> yeah, matter? What movie is that from? <laughs> yeah. But Boom. he's been trolling Jake like crazy now. Ever since then, like I I looked. I went on his Instagram the other day and like I would say the last you know twelve the last fifteen posts is is like jabs at Jake Paul. You so know what? Try, everybody wants everybody wants to make the money. Yeah. yeah. Like, I'll get in the ring with Jake Paul too. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to make a million, million, $10 million. Like these guys sure. are making so much money off of you it. You know what? And I'm sure I'm going to annoy a lot or piss off a lot of people, but you know what this highlights? This highlights the difference between swinging and throwing punches. Dylan, uh, Dylan, Dylan Dennis. 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 It's close. This highlights yeah. the difference between standing up and trying to throw punches with someone and getting on the ground and trying to outgrapple them because he would never in a million years win a grappling match against a normal decent jujitsu guy because on the ground there is no lucky submission. You yeah. get you get no. your well, ass that's, that's, skill. Well, even the, you know to that point, and I totally agree with you. It, if he were to actually fight a just a, an okay legit boxer, I think he would get his ass kicked. Mm-hmm. And that high was highlighted in the in this fight. Yes, I think I think I think Woodley actually almost had a chance just because he's got he's decent hands. Striker. He's yeah. smart. Like he had a game plan. Like and like he came in shape. Like yes, and he get, gave him a run for his let money. Let me give you. Let me let me take it a step further. However good Woodley is at boxing, you take an equivalent jujitsu guy. However good Woodley is in boxing, you get a jujitsu, and the jujitsu guy would school Paul on the ground all day long. Yeah, because uh, on the ground you are like. You can be a lion, but you're in the ocean. You don't know how to swim, and these guys are going to... And I've seen it. I've seen you know, 120-pound guys just fucking play well, with 200-pound guys. I, guys. I, I don't see that. I, right. I, I but he hasn't you. been training that at all. But so I think that translates even to boxing. I think yeah. that he's in a whole nother... He's, he, real boxers that have been boxing for 10, 15, 20 years sure, of their life, of course. even if we none of us know their names... Would still whoop the shit out of him because it's there. He's in a whole other class, dude. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, they're not. And that was that's what I saw from this fight. I mean, mm-hmm. if he's beating up YouTubers and basketball players, you know, for if you're comparing him to those guys, like mm-hmm. okay, the kid can throw some hands, you know. So he, he's yeah. a tough kid. He's an athlete, like you know, and don't want to take the credit from him. But yeah. you put him in a ring with a real boxer, and he's gonna get fucked. Well, up. I mean, I mean, yeah. of course, anything. Uh, if you practice and train and fight at it, you're gonna like. I I remember I've talked about this guy before. He was a 77 year old man who was a boxer back in the day. He was my client, and every once in a while he'd fuck around with me, and he hit me in my shoulder. And I mean, he was like, he wasn't trying to hit me hard, but this old guy, like I, I was like, holy shit, the his hands were so heavy. Because he knew how to punch. And yeah. he would just fuck around, like, beep, beep, you know, hit me in my shoulder. I was like, oh, my God, dude. Yeah. <laughs> this grandpa could knock me out if he I, wanted to. I feel like um, somebody is going to create, like, a league that is specific to these types of fights. Mm-hmm. I feel like that's the move. Or someone like Showtime has, like, like real fights, fights, and then Undercard is always, always has, like, That'll happen. one of these. Because yes. that's a pretty smart move right there. It's like, yeah. Yes, uh, Japan. That would be smart. Japan's already shown that that market works. Yeah. So Japan oh, really? has, a, yeah, they've had a lot of these weird exhibition the mismatch matches. kind of fights. Yeah, yeah, so they'll have, like, a giant, like, a guy who's, like, seven foot and huge against a little, 
you know, shooto champion, and then they'll have him fight, or a sumo wrestler yeah. against the, you know. Well, I mean, that's how the UFC even started. There was so many mismatches in the beginning oh, because they were like kind of sorting it out, like yeah. which style is going to win out over dude, this. When's and the last time you guys watched some of those original UFC? The original great, cage dude. fighting, dude, oh. it's so awesome. Oh, bro, there was oh, I can't remember his name. Damn it, I can't remember his name. Black dude, big muscles. Yeah, he was an arm wrestling champion. His first, I know exactly who you're talking about. You know about. what I'm talking about, yeah, right? Yeah, and then he got like really his punch drunk later on. But anyway, uh, I can't remember his name, but his first fight, he comes out and the guy tries to take him down and he gets him in this weird crucifix position. So he's underneath the guy. He's got one arm tied up with, with legs, one arm tied up with his arms. He's sitting there for a second. Is it and then Bob he, something? Uh, no, not Bob no, Sapp. Not Bob something. Sapp. I'll figure it out. Okay. And then he realizes like, oh, I can elbow this guy and just like out of times. <laughs> And it was like, I, I, I couldn't believe how brutal it was. Yeah. It was I, I'll remember his name. I'll, I'll I know who you're talking about. I can't yeah. think of his name yeah, though yeah. right now. Brutal. Brutal. Yeah, that's the Ken uh, Shamrock, Frank Shamrock days. Oh, yeah, back beast. in those days. Yeah, no, oh, those, my God. Those were good. Dude. Anyway, so I'm excited for dinner time. Are you guys doing the pork chops yet from Butcher Box? Have you guys had those yet? I've I tell have, you every time. I know. I'm you so annoyed know, with you both. I, you know what it is? Because I'm so bad about I get I have my box set, dude. It's yeah. set on the things exactly. that I, I I'm eat telling you right now. I've been eating all of their bacon. I'll do it though, because pork know, chops, yeah. they're, they come, they're like this big. They have a nice layer of fat on them. And what Jessica does is she she takes do butter. You do like a maple glaze? Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 a she, maple glaze. She, oh, whatever. You know, but she does butter and a couple other things and she makes it and then she does she sears it in like a cast iron, puts it in the oven. And then you put this. Oh my oh, god! Oh, she's like that, huh? It's so. She doesn't cook it on the cast iron the whole time. She just sears and then bakes. Maybe she does keep it because I bet you I wouldn't. Have, yeah, on, I bet you wouldn't have to cook it very long on the well, cast thick, iron. Though. They're like that big. Oh, they're like that thick, bro. They're like this thick, oh, and they're wow. like this big. Oh, and they're incredible. And I'm not a pork guy. Well, I've, I mean that I, that was the thing I didn't realize was the 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 difference of the the heritage pork. I just assumed because it was healthier that it wouldn't taste as fatty and as good as like if it was grain fed and stuff like that. Like comparing the the oh, meat. Normal the pork is bland. Yeah, compared to yeah. Uh, to. I mean, to I noticed it just in the bacon. I told you guys that the last time we had a butcher box commercial, I was talking about how we had one weekend when we had bacon, and I didn't, I didn't say nothing about it, I didn't think about it, and then the next weekend Katrina made it again. I'm like, God, why is the bacon so good today? And she's like, That's because this is butcher box. Yep. I'm mm -hmm. like, Damn, I don't realize it until you do something like that where you compare them back to back. Oh, I dare, I dare anybody watching this uh, compare it. it. It's, yeah. it's a, it's way more flavorful, and and I'm not a, I hate pork normally. But now this is like a regular in my box. Speaking of sponsors, yeah. uh, Felix Gray, right? Another company we work with. They make blue light blocking glasses. They came out with a new type of lens for I kids. Saw was it? Oh, was it for just was for kids? Was it for kids no, or was it for it's everybody? For, for everybody, okay. yes. Because so I thought you would a, jump all over because you used to talk well, about the Because we used to amber. talk about it just being clear, which they've had forever, which was great because, you know, so they have the amber version now, which is just slightly sort of colored, but it's not like the super orange. Like Basically what it is, is it's stronger. Stronger, I just got, probably more for nighttime. Yes. Usage. Yeah, but I, I, I don't know about you guys, but I, so I have the daytime and nighttime ones and I... I can tell a significant difference between the daytime and the nighttime. Oh ones. yeah, you get tired. Like yeah, that's exactly. So what I'll do if I'm like if I am uh, working, but I'm on my computer on my phone and sun is down and I don't want to go to sleep and I want to stay up and I want to work and and I don't need to go to bed early or some of that, I'll put the the daytime ones on. And I and what I feel like it, what it does is the the phone or the computer it doesn't overstimulate me. It just feels like I'm not on the computer. Yeah, at all so like you that. don't get the headaches. You don't get the you know right. Like your yeah, eyes I feel totally white. fine. And then when I want to go to bed. I I easily go right to sleep yeah. and I have no problem. If I put the nighttime ones on at night, like on the computer, 30 minutes, I'm yawning. Yep. Like mm -hmm. I'll be on the computer and I'm like, I'm I'm totally falling asleep. So I already notice a huge difference. So you're trying to tell me that these amber ones are going to be like another level of the night? Like stronger. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, even stronger. And by the way, if you've never tried this before, you don't even have to, you can test this out without glasses. What you do is, uh, I don't know, two hours before bed, Turn off all the lights and use candlelight, and tell me that you don't start yawning and get sleepy about yeah. an, within forty five minutes. Just to an that hour. orange glow. It just your brain. I feel like it shuts off. It's this time this reminds me though of one of those things that's really hard. Um, it's like when you're with a client and you're trying to teach them to be able to look at other things besides the scale. Yeah, their mirror, their reflection. They don't even pay attention. They don't, you know. So it's it's one of those things. I feel like you have to do for a while to really start to connect the dots because you're just not used to paying attention. So how many people really pay attention to their nighttime routine before they go no to bed? One. And then you then you give them like these Felix Grey glasses, and they're like, 
oh, like I didn't feel anything. I didn't know anything. It's like, well, first of all, you probably have never even been paying attention. So you have to start with that. So I feel like you have to first pay, start paying attention to your patterns and your behaviors and your, mm -hmm. and your sleep and things like that first to get an idea of, okay, this is what, how long it takes me to fall asleep. This is how rested I feel when I get up. Like, oh, if I get on the computer or the phone mm -hmm. and it's nine right. o'clock at night, what does that do for falling asleep? You got to start to like really watch that stuff. Then you do something and you introduce those classes. And then I feel like it's, it's very yeah, obvious, uh, but I have to teach clients to do that. So I have to credit uh, my wife because she, did this anyway without glasses. She's very much like at a certain time, we dim the lights, we start to talk quieter. It used to annoy me because I come from a very loud family and we're loud as fuck up until the second we need to go to bed. So I was like, this is ridiculous. <laughs> but now that we've been you know, together for a while, I notice a huge difference. Then we go to eat at my parents' house and all the lights are full blast. Everybody's yelling. You know, It's nine, 10 o'clock at night. And I'm like, oh, I can feel that this is not right. I'm supposed yeah. to settle myself down. So you go into my house and past 7 p.m., 6 p.m., 7 p.m., the lights are dim, everything gets darker, we talk a little softer, and it makes a tremendous difference in your sleep quality. You would throw a blue light blocking glasses on that and you're going to sleep like a baby yeah, when yeah. you go to bed. No, I noticed that too. Hey, real quick, I hope you're enjoying this episode. So head over to mindpumpstore.com. These are the final hours for our Labor Day sale, everything, including uh, apparel and equipment, uh, 20 to 50% off while supplies last. So that's mindpumpstore.com. Again, it's the final hours. All right, enjoy the rest of the show. First question is from ZW Spivy. What is the best way to increase grip strength? Mm, grip strength. We get a lot of questions on grip strength, and I do, and I made this comment before, but I do think it's important. Didn't you do a YouTube video on this? I did. And I, I put some like forearm developing exercises on there. But here's here's something. This is something that's very important to consider. Okay. Your hands literally connect you to everything that you're doing. And they're, we evolve to have very you know intricate fingers. Like we can place them well, but also strong hands. Literally, if your hands aren't strong enough to support the weight that you could lift with your shoulders and your back and your legs, then you can't lift that weight. What's happened is uh, our, we barely ever use our hands. In fact, there was a study done with college-aged males. They tested their grip strength, and it was recent. It was like a, within the last five years. And they found that their grip strength was as good as a 60-year-old's in the 1980s. Like, we just don't do anything with our hands. And now this has far-reaching effects on the body. It affects the way that your shoulders move of course, affects your workouts. It affects wrist health. And so it's definitely something that's important to focus on. So if you're working out and you can't hold on to the barbell or the, the dumbbells, you find your hands fatigue, and you're not like some champion power lifter who's lifting ungodly amounts of weight, uh, this is something you should focus on. One of the best things you could do to improve your grip strength is to do a little bit of grip work every single day. So this is an old exercise device. It's probably one of the first pieces of exercise equipment that was ever sold. It's those old school hand grippers that you can- Like you know, a spring-loaded one? A spring-loaded one. And, and now careful because you can overdo this, but literally at your desk, have it there. And every hour, you know, mess around with it for five minutes and then put it down. That's it. And don't go to failure. You're just- you're just working the hands a little bit and your grip strength will go through the roof. What I mean, what are you guys' thoughts? Because th this person, the rest of the question Doug didn't say was struggling with grip on uh, progressing on barbell rows. What are your thoughts of tools like the fat grips and this person using the fat grips to do barbell rows? Well, they'll have to use way less weight because that uh, makes it even harder. Yeah. Initially, yes. I think um, they, I mean, they could just focus on the regular bar to get their hands stronger. But if it's pro progre If it's stopping them from progressing, I mean, you're going to have to do some stuff to get your grip stronger or just be super patient because eventually it'll catch up. You yeah. Know? Or I like farmer, that. farmer carries, yeah. you know, doing things like that to, to do it. I mean, I mean, I, I like the, the squeezing and contracting and I think, I think that's going to help, but I feel like something that is more closely related to what they are trying to try. Like yeah. the, it's for barbell rows, right? So doing it, it, anything but that is, is going to not give you as good of an adaptation as doing that exercise. So I would do things like just get no wrist wraps on heavy barbell rows and or playing with things like fat grips on that and yeah. doing the rows. Here's an old school exercise. Um, this is back when newspapers existed. So you might be able to use something else, but you take a big sheet of newspaper. I guess you could do this with butcher paper. 
and with one hand you start at the corner and you crumple it up little by little until you get the whole thing into a ball. It's actually a very good um, hand exercise. And then in the gym, of course, you can hold on to things for time. That's more of an isometric thing. But don't forget that because it's isometric, the strength tends to be, I mean, there's definitely, it definitely radiates out, but a lot, most of the strength is in that position, right? So work on gripping things that are fatter, like you said, fat yeah. grips or pinch grip. So you can hold plates with your hands like this, like this, one finger at a time if you really want to get well that's crazy. why i like what okay that's why i like going this direction because it is a, it's an isometric contraction problem here yeah. if, you're, if you're doing barbell rows and you can't hold on to the barbell it, it's the it's you being able to hold in that yeah. your hands are in an isometric position you're rowing okay so the rest of your body's not but your hands are and so doing things in the so hangs you know hanging with your body weight on a pull-up bar i think would help i think the fat grips on on the barbell would work and then, of course, just getting getting yeah, just good frequency at frequency and volume of holding heavy things. I mean, it's and like to your point of uh, farmer walks. That was a big game changer for me, just holding weight for longer periods yes. of time. Because and two, you don't really realize that you're holding it for a longer period of time. You're just trying to get to you know so many yards of carrying these objects. Yeah. Uh, so at least it takes kind of the focus away from it. Um, but yeah, like it just exposing, you know, your hands to more, uh, different types of, um, you know, textures and like, even like the, well, like we have the rice bucket stuff, like in, in our OCR program, it's like things like that are, you know, things you don't normally do. And if that's really a focus of yours, you know, expose like, uh, just more dexterity and, and more function out of your fingers, which then helps with the overall hand strength, which then, you know, goes up to your grip and your, your wrist strength and everything else it's just a matter of like uh, contracting and moving your fingers yes. and your hands and, and picking things up yeah and of course the the forearm you know flexors and extenders are kind of connected to that right so there's exercises that'll flex uh extend but then don't don't forget lateral a lot of people forget that this also is important Fly so, fishing right there. Yeah, yeah so i'll 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 i used to get a um like a dumbbell, like, you know, the ones that you can load with weight, the old school ones, so you can load weight or whatever. And I would hold one end and I would load it with a tiny bit of weight on one end. So it was offset. And then I do this exercise here or hold a bit here and go in this direction. You so I'm good for that. Indian clubs. Indian. Uh, I'll do oh. that sometimes too, just because yeah, you have like that long yes. lever. Uh, to account for. Yeah. That, now, that, that being said, all these exercises we're talking about right now, like for forearms and trying to develop for your, your grip strength, the greatest gains I ever had on my grip strength came way later when I started just heavy ass deadlifting yeah. and farmer carries. Totally. Yeah. Like I, and, and I had done, I've like, I remember mean potatoes, wrist curls and reverse wrist curls and doing all this, you know, all the different moves to develop my forearms, to try and work on my grip strength. Nothing gave me better grip strength than actually just getting stronger at deadlifting, stronger mm -hmm. at farmer yeah. carries that brought it up more than anything yeah. else. And, and a stronger grip for people listening or watching who are like, eh, I'm okay. Right. Like what's the benefit? Your presses, your rows, your curls, your extensions, when your hands feel strong, yeah. you're so much more connected to the exercise and you get better activation up the kinetic chain. So they find, for example, that wearing wrist straps, which tends to make us use a weaker grip, re changes the activation up in the neck and in the shoulder. So get, having a stronger grip, even on presses, even exercise you don't think you need to have a strong grip. When your grip is, like try this, next time you bench press, Try putting wrist support on and wrist straps on around the bar, and all of a sudden you can lift more weight. Like, how is that possible? It's simulating a stronger grip. So, yeah. strengthen your grip, and don't be surprised if you don't see all your lifts uh, improve as a result. Next question is from Sarah Holly MN. I sweat a lot during a workout; others not so much. Why is that? Is my body more efficient at cooling down, or why am I prone to sweating so much? Yeah, a lot of people connect sweating a lot with, with a good workout i know with yeah. burning fat and calories yeah and this is mostly a genetic thing it doesn't mean that like it can't be an indicator that maybe you're working harder than you have you guys had a yourself. client like that that just like profusely sweat and they would like apologize all I, the time i'm like it's just you know. i've had both extremes yeah i've had i've had one where they're like that like a puddle underneath them and then i've had others where i could destroy him or her and they just you know barely like one little, yeah, little sweat little bead, bead. yeah like, like not at all so it's Mostly genetic. Yeah, I actually trained somebody that didn't sweat. And I don't mean like, oh, I don't sweat. Like they literally had a medical condition mm. where they didn't sweat. And we had to be, I had to work closely with the doctor. Can't get them too hot. No. 
their bot, they could, it's actually quite dangerous. And so I had to work with their doctor and talk about how to train them. And the workouts were, we had to be very careful because they didn't sweat. Their body could overheat very quickly and they could, they could develop problems. Are Here's, you, are you familiar with any, any research that it sh shows that there's any benefits to somebody who does sweat really well, other than what you're talking about right well, now as far as danger? Yeah, actually. So the heating up of the body and your body cooling itself off with sweat is a, is a good indicator that you're hydrated. And also exercises, for lack of a better term, the muscle of your body dealing with changes in temperature. So it's like why you get benefit of going to the sauna, yeah. right? It's your body acclimating to temperature. And so if you use a sauna regularly, you'll find that your, your heat tolerance improves um, over time. One of the things I used to tell my clients when I would notice they weren't sweating as much or, and this is good for trainers, you'll see your client sweating weird. And what I mean by that is they're dry everywhere except they sweat in one spot. Mm -hmm. Sometimes that means they're, they're, uh, they need more water. So their body is, they're not hydrated. They're not drinking enough water. And so they have these kind of patches of oh, sweat. Oh, interesting. That's what that means? Sometimes. Oh, wow. So what I would do with these clients is I would say, oh, you need to drink more water. Then they drink more water and they feel a lot better. And then I would notice more uniform uh, sweat. What is that? Bodies. Is that because that's the uh, the only place the, the the body has found water, and so it's it's, it's like conserving. It from that it's like the most important place that they need to sort of cool down. Yeah, your yeah. body's conserving this fluid, and so it's like okay, we can't full, we can't sweat everywhere. Oh, interesting. Yeah, so mm -hmm. um, so I would increase their their water intake, and they would notice improvements in performance. But that being said, if let's say you're well hydrated, you have a good diet, your working your workout programming is good. You know, sweat a lot, not sweat a lot doesn't really doesn't really mean much at all. I mean, when when you, when I'm doing a, a strength focused workout with long rest periods, I'm not sweating that much. When I'm doing yeah, I supersets, I sweat a lot. I Both don't are sweat effective. very often. Yeah, yeah. unless it, it is like it's a very like high intensity cardio based workout. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, any strength, I just I barely sweat. Oh, I sweat pretty easy. I have to be. I have to do a very low volume, slow, long rest period type of workout to not sweat. Is that why you shower all the time? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's why. That's why it's hard for me to train hard in the morning here and then podcast because I don't. You just I'll, continue sweating. Yeah. Well, yeah. I'm, I'm hot and then I'm all sticky and I don't like that. I'm not. Next question is from one grumpy economist. What is more taxing on the nervous system? High reps with lower weight or low reps with higher weight? Oh, this is a good question. This, yeah, this is good. This is a really good question. Because um, it depends, as usual. I, it does, right, on the total volume. Mm -hmm. But I, I have to say, if we have to pick one. Heavyweight. Yeah. You know what? That's it's if uh, That can be true sometimes, but think about it. Like, what would hammer you more? Like, you know, a set of uh, max out single or one set of like 30 reps on a squat. Are we talking about the feeling of being fried like after you're done? Yeah. 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 The high reps will do that to you, won't it? Yeah. I mean, yeah. After you're done, that, the amount of voice. Sometimes I just want to go take a nap because it just, it, you know, the, depending on how much you did, it's like, whoa. Uh, it, it adds up later. Well, you could also make the case that it's going to be most taxing on the one that you don't do. Yeah. Yeah. So if you're, cause I've yeah, met super conditioned. Yeah. I've met, I've had clients who are the, you know, CrossFit or the orange theory circuit. Light, and then I could superset them, no rest periods for a whole hour. And right. they, they feel they're fully great adapted afterwards. to that. Yeah. yeah. I could take that same person and do some five by fives or some real heavy truck. And they are like the gas they're They, they're messed up the next day. They're sore shit for the next two or three days. So it really has to do with what you're already adapted to really well. And then mm -hmm. that's then the opposite is probably going to be more taxing on the CNS because your CNS adapts also. Yes. So if you whatever you're doing and if you're getting good and efficient at it, it's 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 not going to be so taxing on the body when you do it again versus mm -hmm. doing something that is totally different than what you ever do. It's going to tax. You're not the used CNS. to lifting really heavy weight. Yeah, that's going to be real demanding. Like right. You need to allocate yeah. a lot of energy in that direction. I think intensity makes a big difference here. Like I can do low reps at moderate intensity, and I can do higher reps at moderate intensity. Right. And neither one of them will tax me. If I do either one at, to failure, there's a, a a huge difference in how uh, my body feels. But yeah, I, I completely agree. Um, it depends on which one you're used to and you move away from what you're used to and it's very taxing on the body. Your body's just not used to that. those types which of is, reps. Which is why cool. when you transition like that, this goes back to the thing I, I always talking about doing as little as possible to elicit the most amount of change. It's like if you make a switch from you know, one modality to another, like you, that's when you got to scale way back. You yes. can't take the same approach. If you've been training circuit training hardcore for 
six months, years, and you're really good at it, and then you've got the and you, so you can bring it to that workout. You don't, and then now all of a sudden you start doing five by five type of blocks. You know, mm -hmm. strength training, lower the intensity. Yeah, you got to back way off. You can't take that same mindset now that you've adapted to for that way of training, and the, and the same and the reverse is true. Yeah, well, I noticed this too, even just like moving recently, right? So I'm doing a lot of like awkward heavy objects, but lots of isometric contraction for longer periods of time, and it was just like my whole body was just like, okay, Tax, we're done. Tax your CNS, yeah, right? I have not it's done It's not that. heavier weight than you've ever dealt no. before. You left heavier weight inside the gym, but it's exactly. diff it's so different to the body, and you probably were doing it yeah. for an hour or two hours, and your body yeah. said- Take a professional mover who moves yeah. people's houses for a Does, living. Can do three yeah. houses Doesn't back even break back. a sweat. Yeah, yeah. I was like, oh, that's a piece of cake. This is, uh, this is no problem. Yeah, that makes it a huge difference. This is why I know there's a lot of ways to measure- you know, heart heart rate variability and this and that. I, I think really just your perceive. You have to you have to kind of be in touch with your body and understand how your body feels. And I I can tell when I do a workout. Usually after, usually after the workout's done. Sometimes while I'm doing it, like oh that was I went a little too hard. And it could be heavy, it could be light. It depends on how I felt that day or whatever. So that's what's really important is pay attention to those signs like. Do I feel fried after my workout? Do I feel scatterbrained? Am I exhausted or do I have energy? Am I feeling stiff or do I feel loose? Do I have lots of inflammation? And then the next workout, do I feel like, wow, I'm weaker. Wow, I don't have as much stamina. Like those are all signs that whatever you did was probably too much. Next question is from Liam McKirkbride. What is the most effective way to bulk? And should I track macros or be intuitive? You know, here's the thing with intuitive eating, right? Intuitive eating means you're in touch with your the signals of your body. You're eating kind of what your body needs at any given moment. The direction intuitive eating will bring you is uh, balance. You're going to be relatively lean, relatively muscular and strong, fit and healthy. Okay, You want to go outside of that, right? You want to get extreme. You want to get super shredded or super big. Uh, it's not intuitive. There's nothing intuitive about pushing my body to gain 15 yeah. pounds mm -mm. of mass or to get down to 4% body fat. It's just, it, it's not intuitive because your body is always trying to be healthy. And if you're intuitive about it, you're going to be healthy. You push outside of that, you're probably going to have to track. I know I yeah. do. When I'm well, trying to bulk, I have to track because if I do it intuitive, it ain't going to happen. You can only be intuitive if you've had the history of uh, putting the reps in first and the training behind that. So it's always like you got to track to even know what that looks like. Otherwise, it's just a guessing game. So there's nothing, it's not necessarily intuitive. It's just that you're kind of like guessing and feeling your body's signals, which can totally be misleading. Uh, whereas tracking, like at least to understand where your maintenance is, I think that's the very first thing. I was I remember being so challenged answering this this question because when we wrote the intuitive guide, um, we got a bunch of this because we were we we're promoting that. I mean, ideally, I think that that's the place to be. Like you want to get there. I think for when we talk about general health, longevity, right? Yep. We, Sustainability. Yeah, we've talked about like that is the place to get. Like you want to get to a place of intuitive eating, intuitive training, to where it's not this big stress or something you have to think about all the time mm -hmm. in order to do it. But the truth is, if you have very specific goals, like even as long as we've been training, I don't, I don't eat intuitively. If I really care about adding ten pounds of muscle or shredding ten pounds of fat, and I want to do it as fast and as efficient as possible, I'm tracking yeah. still today. Now, does that mean that I couldn't do it intuitively and maybe slowly get there? You know. Well, yeah, I could probably do that. I can intuitive. I don't think you'd be able to do it to get down to five percent, though. No, you're right because it just because your intuitive is your body saying no. Yeah, well, the That's more too lean. <laughs> the more extreme the goal is, the more important yes. it becomes to be diligent about your tracking yeah. because there's less room for error yeah. as, as you as you scale up or down. Yeah, so. intuitive could take you from inactive to fit or obese to relatively lean. Right, intuitive is uh, home base. This is your home base. Now, if, if your home base is healthy and balanced and you're you know, fit and you can move and you feel good generally, and then you want to move away from home base and go extreme, extreme is not healthy. It just isn't. Like forcing your body to hit ridiculous PRs all the time is not longevity promoting. It's fun. And, and I think that that's, there's, there's something to it with quality of life and all that stuff. But are, you know, we'd be lying to ourselves if we said that that was about longevity. Same thing with getting super shredded. Like 
is getting down to single digit body fat percentage, uh, is that good for longevity? No, no, longevity is higher than that, right? It's not super high, but it's higher than that. Getting super, you, you get on stage and you compete, there's nothing, there's, that doesn't promote longevity, it just looks super shredded. So if you're trying to do it in an intuitive way and you're really intuitive about it and you're honest, your body is saying, uh, no, I don't want to keep eating, you know, 3,500 calories a day or no, I don't want to get down to that leanness. I remember, I mean, I know when I get down below 9% body fat or 8% body fat, my intuitive signals are saying you need to eat. This is not, you don't want to be here. All, you know, well, and long. I know there's, there's, there's definitely people right now that are listening like, oh, I have no problem. I eat intuitively and I'm shredded or I'm, I yeah. can do this. It's like, there's always going to be exception. And by the way, congratulations, you're a black belt in this. I mean, that's yeah. it, when you get to a certain level of training, dieting uh, for so long, you, you get pretty good at being able to adjust a few things to get your body to respond in the direction that you want it to yeah. go. I want to add a few pounds of muscle. I know there's a few things mm -hmm. I can do right now that will instantly do that for me. And the same thing goes for going the opposite direction. So it doesn't mean that there's not people that can't move their body weight up or down or get, get really shredded and lean or get really buff from intuitive eating. It's just, it's, it's way more difficult for the average person. And if you're, if you really have a, a very specific goal and you also want to do it as quick and as efficient as possible, you just got to track. Now to answer the part uh, of the question, that's like, what's the most effective way to bulk? Figure out your maintenance calories. So whatever you're, you need to eat to not gain weight and to not lose weight, add about five to 700 calories to that, depending on how your body responds. Make sure you eat about, you know, generally one gram of protein per pound of body weight. Um, and depending on your gut health and how you feel, you don't want to go too low carb. Um, and that's it. And that'll be the most effective way, right? You could go a thousand calories or 1500 calories over maintenance. You'll gain more weight, but it won't be more muscle. In my experience is about five to 700 over is kind of the magic sweet spot, uh, for most people. And then here's the other part of this. If you have a workout that's not stimulating muscle growth, uh, then it's not going to work. You're just going to gain body fat. So if you send the right signal, bulking is actually easy. If you're not sending the right signal, bulking can be a real big uh, pain in the ass. So make sure your workout is really effective, really well programmed, and then you add 500 calories to your maintenance and you'll see muscle. My favorite thing to do as far as the workout being effective is when you make this mental decision that I'm going to switch to a bulk, um, like the advice I give to clients is this is where I have them switch to another MAPS program. So whatever they're currently following, it doesn't matter where they're at. And I, I normally will go, okay, we are going to add five, 700 calories. And now we're also going to transition into a different program. Yeah. So a whole new stimulus. Absolutely. Look, if you like our information, uh, head over to mindpumpfree.com. We have lots of free guides that can help you build muscle, burn body fat, improve your health and your athletic performance. We even have guides for pain. So that's mindpumpfree.com. You can also find all of us on Instagram. So you can find Justin at mindpumpjustin. You can find myself at mindpumpsal and Adam at mindpumpadam.